Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this lecture, we want to continue with our thought experiment. If you recall, in, in the last lecture, we set the scenario of um, General Eisenhower's office in 1943 Europe, and the security problem that we were trying to solve was uh, con controlling the uh, access to particular pieces of information. So in this scenario, we have various pieces of information, some of which are highly sensitive, like the war plan, some of which are much less sensitive, like the base softball schedule, and we also have a bunch of people who are coming in and out of the office, uh, General Eisenhower himself, his secretary, and so on, some of whom are very trusted and others not so much. Right? And so the problem that we're trying to solve is to understand what security, in particular confidentiality, means in that domain. We call this multi-level security. Okay, so remember what we did is we partitioned the information out into a number of folders and we affixed labels to those folders which were supposed to represent the level of the information which was contained in the folders, right? And so uh, the examples that, that you saw last time were we might have, for example, a secret nuclear crypto, meaning that the information in the folder is at a fairly high level of, of confidentiality and, con and pertains to the crypto and the nuclear areas or domains. Or top secret crypto meant it's very confidential information about the crypto domain. So our labels were structured in this way where we had a hierarchical component and a set of need to know categories. And now the question is, if we've done that and we have all these manila folders say laying on the secretary's desk which are stamped with these various labels and somebody walks into the office and says, I wanna see that one, how do we know whether she should say yes or no? That's the question that we want to address. Okay, so since we already have this labeling mechanism in place, why not apply it to the people as well? And in particular, we're going to assign individuals authorizations or clearance levels, um, and they're going to be of the same general form as the labels that we put on our, on our documents. In particular, they're gonna be a hierarchical level and a set of need to know categories. But the semantics or the interpretation of the levels differs because when we label a document, that indicates the type of information which is in there. When we give a label, they're not really labels, but uh, they're levels, to an individual, that indicates the amount to which we trust that individual. So for example, if we give someone a, a level of secret, we know that they're fairly trusted. If we give them a level of top secret, they're highly trusted. And also they have a set of need to know categories. Those are areas in which they're authorized to operate. Okay, so why do we need these need-to-know categories for people? Well, it's because uh, even within a level like top secret, not all information should be available to all the people. So for example, the people that work in crypto, there's no reason for them to know uh, nuclear information and vice versa. And so this is an instance of what's called the principle of least pri privilege. The principle of least privilege says that you should uh, authorize someone for only the amount of information that they need to do their job. Why does that make sense? Well, for the following reason. If you don't give information to somebody, they can't leak it. And so if there's information, nuclear information, for example, that the crypto people don't have to know, if you were to give it to them, they might leak it inadvertently or deliberately. Uh, so why take that chance? They don't need the information to do their job anyway. Right. Um, okay. So. Given that we now have the labels on documents and we have levels associated with people, then how do we decide who should be able to see what documents? So here's some examples, right? You have an individual who is um, authorized at secret crypto and you have a document which is at sensitivity confidential crypto. And the question is, should that individual be able to see that document? Intuitively, it seems okay, right? Because the individual is cleared a secret, the information level is only confidential, which is lower, and the, the uh, need to know categories coincide. They're both uh, authorized and, and, and sensitive in crypto, so why not? Yeah, seems reasonable. How about the second example? We have an individual who's authorized a secret in crypto and nuclear, and the document is top secret crypto. If you think about that, that individual probably should not be allowed to see the document, 
because he's only cleared the secret, and yet the document contains top secret information, which is above his clearance level. So the answer in that case ought to be no. And then finally, uh, an individual who's cleared a secret nuclear you know, should be able to see a document at unclassified with no categories. That's sort of a no-brainer, right? So the idea is, if we have these clearance levels and these sensitivity levels, what is it that we're intuitively doing there? That is, how do we formalize our intuition about when we should have a yes and when we should have a no? Um, okay, and, and we'll get to that in the next, in the next lecture. But uh, what have we learned? We've learned that to control access by a subject to an object or a human to a document, we need to have these associated uh, sensitivity levels on both the subject, that is the, the human, and the document or the, the object that he wants access to. Uh, for documents, the labels indi indicate the sensitivity of the information contained in the document. For humans, the labels indicate the authorization level or the clearance level. And an individual should always be given the least uh, clearance that they need to do their job. That's called the principle of least privilege. And then finally, whether an individual should be allowed to view a particular document is some relationship between the level of the document and the level of the human. And we're going to get in our next lecture uh, to the point of saying exactly what that relationship is. Thank you.